Hello there, I'm Natalie from Baggage Reclaim, where I help people to live and love with self-esteem. It's Advice Wednesday, which means it's time for me to help somebody figure out their situation. This week, Helen wants to know what to do after she discovered that her partner still has plenty of fish on his iPad. I have been seeing my partner for nine months and we're about to move in together. A few weeks ago, I spotted the plenty of fish icon on his iPad. This is how we met. I didn't say anything at first, but noticed that A, he would use the iPad so I couldn't see much if I sat next to him, and B, that he would receive notifications that were cleared regularly. Last night, I confronted him. He said that it was left there by mistake, that he didn't use it, and that he would delete it. I insisted that he delete it immediately in front of me. He got defensive, he called me paranoid, but he did delete it. Since then, he's been okay. Before this, he hasn't given me a reason to distrust him. We both see his parents regularly. He looks after my cat because I couldn't have him in my flat and he doesn't spend lots of time away. In fact, when it came to us moving in together, it was his idea and, first, and he first suggested it six months before I finally decided to give it a trial. However, I couldn't shake off a bad feeling about the relationship and now wonder if this was it. What should I do? I would suggest in this situation that Helen steps back and tries to get a bit of objectivity about what is going on here. Because what is most definitely going on is there is this recurring theme, there's this pattern in the relationship of Helen having doubts, misgivings, concerns, and not voicing them. And you know, you're now this Helen is now nine months into the relationship, and there has been this unshakable feeling that something just isn't quite right. And one of the things I always say to people is when something doesn't feel right, it's normally because it isn't. And so unless you are of the paranoid inclination where all the time you're always jumping to conclusions, the best thing that you can do is trust your gut and intuition. Trust it, pay attention to it, because once you start to acknowledge that something doesn't feel right, then you can start to notice what is going on, for instance, within you and what is going on outside of you that is contributing to that feeling. Sometimes when we don't feel as if something feels quite right, we can, we can think, oh, I don't know where it's coming from. But actually, it's going to be internal, external or both. If it's internal, that will be inner chatter. That will be about self-criticism, you know, your inner critic, you know, stirring up things in your head about what might potentially be going on, you know, predicting doom. If it's external, there will be real evidence that is setting off some alarm bells that are not being picked up. And I think that one of the reasons why these alarm bells are not being picked up by Helen is because she has gotten sidetracked by what I call hallmarks. One of the things that people can fall into the trap of thinking is, oh, well, um, I get taken out to dinner, they buy me flowers, they do things for me, I've met the parents, I've met the friends, um, you know, I, I can't possibly uh, imagine that they have the time to go and cheat or whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying that this guy is cheating, but it's quite telling that she points out about how, you know, she meets up with the parents and he takes care of the cat and he's not around or that he doesn't go traveling very much. And that would suggest to me that actually in previous relationships, she wouldn't necessarily have done things, maybe for instance, like meet the parents regularly or meet the friends, that maybe she wouldn't have felt that, you know, she could entrust a partner to take care of the cat and that in her mind if somebody is up to something then they will be away a lot now again i'm not suggesting that he is cheating but what i will say is that a person can be cheating and still see uh you know his parents regularly with or with, with with your partner and can take care of a cat and all the rest so it's it, helen has to be careful of being blinded by by these i think what can happen in these situations, and I don't know how she came to discover about the, 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 the Plenty of Fish app on his iPad. It could be accidental, or it could be down to snooping. But what I do know is that at the point of discovery, she didn't decide to communicate, to have a discussion, you know, to confront the issue. I didn't say to have a confrontation, I said to confront the issue. And instead she went down the route of, I'll, go, I'll be Jessica Fletcher, and I'm going to see if I can see what the suspect is up to and, you know, and, and gather some evidence on it. At the point then where she's confronted him, 
it's probably all built up inside of her. She's then confronted him about it. He's got very defensive. And, you know, you can be defensive about something without being guilty of something. But then he has, I do think, dismissed her feelings, dismissed her concerns by calling her paranoid. Again, the situation doesn't lend itself to this sort of collaborative uh, atmosphere of communication. Instead, it's this now, this sort of, this sort of feeling of distrust. Whatever reason that she has for her misgivings about moving in, and it could quite simply be it was too soon when it was three months in, certainly now that she's nine months down the road and she's now saying that she's going to move in on a trial basis, that to me still says that she has her reservations. Rather than dismissing her concerns, she needs to take some time to try to locate the underlying concerns. A very, very handy trick is to... Play back your mental tape. Go right back to the start of the relationship. And this is something that's recommended by, uh, and I read this book years ago, like you're talking about 20 years ago, in Are You the Right One for Me by Barbara DeAngelis. And she says, play back your mental tape. Rewind it all the way back to the start of the relationship from when you first met and play back that mental tape really slowly. And then you will start to notice those things, those gut warnings, those, those, those messages from your intuition that are letting you know about what is really going on here. You might notice things about, for instance, the partner. You might notice things about yourself. But these will pro this will provide you with a great deal of information about what is going on. I would also recommend that for now, for Helen, that she maybe hold off on moving in and instead focus on building a relationship with mutual love, care, trust, and respect. And that if that underlying feeling isn't resolved and she really needs to look at removing herself out of the relationship.